one two and the Red Bull streak has come to an end. It didn't rain, it's Singapore. Welcome back to the Grid Talk podcast. This is episode 329. And if you'd like to see or hear more from us in your social feed, why not give us a follow at Grid Talk UK everywhere you can find the at symbol. I'm your host, Tom Horrocks. And today I am joined by Grid Talk hosts, Owen Medford. Hello. And Tom Downey. Hello. And we're also joined by journalist Aaron Harper. Hello. And now a word from today's sponsor, which, as usual, is betonline.ag. Betonline.ag is your number one source for all your basketball info, stats, news and scores. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest player reports for this year's pro basketball playoffs. Betonline is always your sports information headquarters this season, as they have you covered for all your sports wagering needs. Basketball, MLB, NHL, hockey, right through to UFC and boxing. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to get to your betting info, including live betting options and your favourite casino and card games you can play straight from your home. Head to betonline.ag today. Be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome discount on your first deposit. BetOnline, where the game starts. Now, who would have bet on this result today? Uh, an absolutely astonishing finish and uh, a bit of a slow burn to start, but uh, but a crazy, crazy ending. Uh, but we're going to start really with um, with what happened on Saturday uh, for one of the drivers anyway, uh, Aaron. We're going to go to you for, for Aston Martin to talk about their race. And Lance Stroll not even starting the race. Fernando Alonso, 15th. Just a quick ride on, on Stroll and, and obviously his condition and just what happened with Alonso today. It was not surprising to see that Lance wasn't taking part in the race today, considering the violence of his crash in Q1 on Saturday. I mean, the, the head movement was pretty severe by modern standards. I mean, the, the, the drivers are pretty well ensconced in, in the cockpits nowadays, and they're generally pretty safe. Safety's come a long way, and it did hark back to the Mika Hakkinen accident at Adelaide in 1995, which was Stroll's sort of head movement, but, you know, times it by 100 and that left him in a coma. So, you know, you, you can see just how far safety has come, but still there is a lot to be learned about concussions and head injuries. And I think they did the right thing in whether they pulled him out or he just wasn't in the right headspace to um, race today. They did the right thing in not fielding that car. And then with their, their other car, they had a bit of a disaster. I mean, it was all kind of self-induced by Alonso because he made a mistake coming into the pit lane. And uh, his race kind of unraveled from there. Got whacked with a five-second time penalty, then served that penalty, and the the pit stop didn't go very well. So, uh, yeah, there'll be some questions asked to Aston Martin as to why that happened. And at one point, he even said the car was undrivable. I, I think there was probably a little bit of damage from when he was bouncing over the curbs, entering the pit lane, because he wasn't particularly quick uh, once the race had resumed after the first safety car. And... Uh, he got himself stuck behind Sergio Perez and unable to make the progress that the likes of Hamilton had been able to make and Leclerc had made as well, going past the Red Bulls. So it kind of just was a series of unfortunate events for Aston Martin and it left them completely pointless. And it's allowed, uh, I say allowed, it's meant that Hamilton has jumped ahead of Alonso in the Drivers' Championship, which... I'm not sure Fernando will be very pleased about. He was probably looking forward to finishing third and being best of the rest behind the Red Bulls. So uh, that sort of dynamic in the in the drivers' championship that's a story to look out for as the season moves forward. So uh, keep uh, keep your eyes peeled on that space. Yeah, undri- undrivable. That's the first time we've heard him be say anything particularly negative about the Aston Martin team this year, and a bit of a bit of a strange one for them today. Very up and down, but a team that's been very much down and not up. Tom is Alfa Romeo at the start of this se- start of this weekend. They brought a whole host of upgrades, and the team was saying this is the upgrades the team have been waiting for. If this is what they've been waiting for, it doesn't really look good, does it? Listen, did I do something wrong in a past life to get Alfa Romeo two days on the bounce? Because <laughs> today they did absolutely nothing to write home about. You know, Joe Box on what like lap six, seven odd went went to the hards. Um, Bottas was last of the of, of of the runners to finish. You know, Russell even put it in the barriers and still finished ahead of him. Um, so you know, I'm just like I, I'm trying not not to be negative, but. I don't know what else to say about them. It's like, you, you know, they've, um, they, they've, they, they've just, they've just 
they bring nothing to the table. You know, yesterday, you know, I'm going to talk about the different analogy today. You know, yesterday I described them as, as that plain Tesco's meal deal. Today, if they were, today's analogy for Alfa Romeo is going to be if they were a Domino's pizza, they'd be a, they'd be an eight inch margarita with no stuffed crust and no dip. That's what they would be with a bottle of water. So, you know, it's just, you know, I, I, I don't know what else to say because you're just waiting for the Audi money. You know, I might as well get that tattooed on my forehead by this point because I say it so much. It's just like, you know, they're just, they're just so uninspiring. They're so dull. And I'm trying not to be negative. It's not going very well. Um, and and they're just, you know, they, they just bring, they bring nothing to the table. And for a team that's so steeped in history, you know, such as Sauber and all the iterations it's had through the years, you know, they've had some brilliant highs, but at the minute they're going through a real low. And they, you know, they, they, they need to get to grips with that car. I mean, I know Singapore's a difficult circuit, you know, as, as other teams have that this weekend. Um, but, you know, it's just like, you know, come on, just give us something. Give us a glimmer of hope. Well, I love an eight-inch margarita pizza if you want to put a positive spin on it. So uh, that's that's my take on Alfa Romeo there. So, oh, and then we get a, a slightly, still a bit of a bad day for Williams, but uh, um, it, we didn't expect them to go very well. But then, you know, Sergeant kind of caused the, uh, caused the race to burst into life on lap 20 when he decided he was going to have an argument with the barrier. And, uh, and Albon had a bit of a set two with Perez as well, but still no points for Williams. I know they weren't expecting a lot, but would they be disappointed given how the race panned out? Uh, I mean, I think they will be. I don't think it was a particularly obvious, like they, they've sort of been brought back down to earth. It wasn't, um, it's, it's not a circuit that would suit the characteristics of their car, really. It's a, it's, it's a bit, it's a bit too slow. Um, um, I think, you know, obviously, uh, Sergeant putting it in the barrier, that was self-inflicted. Um, obviously, like, you know, he, he didn't have the worst uh, effect of that because obviously it brought out the safety car, which is, uh, you know, and obviously stayed in the race. Um, I think for Albon, I think I, I, I think it's un- he, he was unlucky, to be honest, because he came up against a wild Perez. And um, I've only, I've, unfortunately, I've only been able to see the uh, the, the Albon uh, side of it, but it does look like uh, it does look like Albon, uh, sorry Perez throws it up the inside, and there's no way he's getting round. But unfortunately, that was that that kind of ruined Albon's race and dropped him out of the points, which is a shame because he was doing quite well up until that point. Um, you know, I, I'd, I'd have liked to have seen what he can done, uh, could have done. Sorry, obviously, Sergeant. You know, once he was sort of uh, once he was dropped back, apparently he had floor damage as well from what Ted could uh, Ted Kravitz could see. So um, I think it's probably a bit a, a bit of uh, sorry a bit of a handful to drive if I get my words out. Um, yeah, it's it's it, it's an okay weekend for them, but um, obviously not. They, they've got to be disappointed because they, they had chances of points there and and they were kind of stolen from them. But um, I don't think they made things easy for themselves either. No, it was a bit of a bit of an up and down day, as I, as I said before, for them. And uh, but as I say I, I don't think they'll be they'll be too disappointed. But it shows how well how far they've come when they're disappointed with a P11. That was normally kind of the best they could have hoped for at the start of the season. But uh, moving on to Haas, um, Aaron, a slightly more relevant day for them than normal. Fair play, they had both cars in the points at various spells in the race they had spells on camera where they were fighting with cars magnuson made a mistake to lose a few places but the late change to softs meant that he was able to recover to 10th so um a a relevant race for them for once and, and at least gaining a point to into their uh, amazing tally of points they've got this year it was kind of the perfect race for uh Haas in terms of the pace at the front meant that the Haas cars couldn't ruin their tires so they were just sort of there just off the back of Verstappen on his difficult day and uh yeah for them to come away with a point is positive but they've finished behind an Alpha Tauri being driven by a chap who's only in his third race so it, yeah there was a few errors in there I think they could have maybe executed the race a little bit better um Magnussen had his little adventure of which he lost what, five or six positions all at once so the drivers need to take a little bit of blame for, you know, the, the poor execution of certain weekends. And they, they kind of got away with it in that Russell and Ocon and Alonso all ran into issues who were all set to be in the points at various points of the race. I mean, Russell was even on to potentially win the race. So that tells you sort of what they're clutching at there. But a point's a point. That's important for them. And uh, I think they just need to look at making sure they they have clean races towards the end of the season and 
pick up any spare pieces that are left on the table by the top teams. And to be to be fair and to their credit, they did that today. They got P10. Yeah, that's a really good point about the race pace and and how it's so slow and how you know that means that Haas could potentially keep their tyres in the window. So yeah, really really solid point there. And they are two points ahead of Alfa Romeo in the championship. And Alfa Romeo do not like they look like they're going to score anytime soon. You watch them get a podium in Japan, though. I've said that. So moving on then to the Alfa Tori team, then Tom, uh, we're talking about them fifth in this podcast, which is you know it's right in the middle, and and they've got they've got a couple of points in there from Liam Lawson today, uh, a bad race overall for for Sonoda, uh, out very very early on, um, but say Lawson kept his nose clean and 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 uh, may have lost a few places at the start, but um, really good showing from him. Yeah, so Sonoda DNF'd on that one. Uh, I think he had contact with Perez because Perez had end, uh, end plate damage. Um, and he, Sonoda had a rear punch and it was curtains for him from that point on. I do wonder, and I'm just speculating, I do wonder if uh, um, Yuki was carrying some form of issue anyway because he's, he, he exited Q2 without even setting a lap. So I wonder if there was something more at play. I don't know. No, I'm just, just speculating by this point. Um, but yeah, Liam Lawson, blinking neck. You know, I, I he was always decent in F2. You know, never never one of those ones who absolutely set it alight, but he was always good, you know, you know, he was always like, consistent. And he's coming to F1, you know, by chance, basically, you know, just you know, just with a just with the almost stroke of luck. And He's doing bits in that Alpha Tauri. You know, he, he only just missed out on points in Monza. Um, you know, he, he he had a good race in Zambor, aside from that 10 second penalty, you know, at the start of the race. Um, and then to come to Singapore, you know, which is one of the most demanding circuits on the calendar, you know, because the chart layout, the weather, you know, all that stuff. To get two points in a race in that Alpha Tauri, which is one of, if not the worst cars on the grid. Um yeah, I mean, bravo. And, you know, he's the only driver for Alpha Alpha Tari this year to score more than one point in a race. Yuki's got three points, but he's had three template uh, finishes. And obviously, Ricardo and DeVries didn't score any points. Um, this is the first time Alpha Tari have had a driver finish higher than, P, higher than P10 this season. And it's just like, you, you know, he's um, he's going to be causing a headache for, for, the, for the Red Bull hierarchy. Because you've got to look at the two other seats um, in Alpha Tari. You've got to look at, you know, Danny Rick, you know, is he going to be there next season? You know, is he just a short term fix whilst they realise how they messed up uh, Nick DeVries? Do they get rid of Yuki because he's been there three years? Yeah, and then you have to look at other drivers who are coming through F2. You know, do they go for a completely new lineup? Because we're, we're just, you know, we're speculating about one seat. You used to say the both seats might not be replaced. And, and Lawson doing this well could be the catalyst for that decision happening. I, you know, I don't know. But I am really impressed with Liam Lawson, honestly. You know, you know I, I I said after um uh, after Monza that you know let's get to Singapore and let's see what he does. I said the same about the Reese last year, and for a good reason because Singapore is so difficult and so taxing on a driver. And as the F1 TV commentators were saying this weekend as well, it's pretty much dispelling this whole um oh you know rookie drivers you know you know go easy on them. Lawson's in his third race; it's only a second full race weekend. And he scored. He scored P nine in Singapore, you, you know. So you know, you yes, he was a bit, you know, a bit fortunate. Obviously, you know, Russell fell down the order, you know, so that promoted him from P ten. But he was in P ten on merit. He got into Q three on merit, and it, it's just like you know, he knocked out Max in 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 Q two, you know, as we all saw yesterday. So yeah, give the lads some credit. You know, the last time there there was there was a there was a Kiwi in that um in that Toro Rosso Alpha Tauri. He, didn't go too well, did it? Um, but, but you know, you know th- this. You know, that's Brendan Hartley, in case any, anybody's not sure. But you know, th- this this time round, yeah, you know, Liam Lawson, you know, he he deserves that seat. And I think when Danny Rick's hand is fully healed, I do think Alfatari will put Danny Rick back in that seat. But Liam Lawson has done a really good job to stake his claim over three races. This is the important thing: over three races at three very different kind of circuits. He's, he's done really well to stake his claim for a full-time race seat for next year. And I think he's more than earned it. Yeah, absolutely. Fully, fully echo that completely. And, uh, and yeah, he's not going to get the rest of the season. I think they've already said that, but 
all he can do is shine in the races that he's in and treat it as a bonus. And he's given them a really big headache to think about. So well done, Liam Lawson on a great performance there. And moving on to, to Alpine then, oh, I mean, they, I mean, disappointing in the end for Ocon, but he had a great battle with Alonso and with Perez and, and Gasly was getting stuck in as well. But again, they were only really looking at potentially, you know, sixth, sixth, seventh place for the finishes there. But a bit of a step forward, I think, from what we've seen in the past few weeks from Alpine. Oh, massive. Um, unfortunately, it's come down to the, you know, that they've been, the, their Achilles heel is now the reliability, which is not great. Um, you know, that, that that's that's the only thing, but like, you have to look at sort of where where they started and and where they could have ended up. You know that could have been a solid double points finish um, for Alpine, which is something they sorely need, uh, particularly in the constructors. Um, and it's just unfortunate that they've not got it. I mean, it it's not it wasn't going to be life changing. They are a bit in, a bit in moment, no man's land. Um, but I think they did an amazing, an absolutely amazing job um, up until that point. They were they were doing great. They were, you know, the, the basically they were they were unlike LP normally are um you know obviously we had Ocon going off which were, which wasn't great um it spice up the racing a little bit though so I'll take that um you know and Gasly it was a little bit anonymous but um he didn't throw it in the barrier um you know they, they, and and he got sixth place sixth place which is from where he started is pretty good like he started 12th on the grid and he's uh, and uh, you know to come through the field and get up to sixth at a place where obviously it's hard to overtake um you know, he was he was aided a little bit by various different things, but you know, it's still difficult. Um, yeah, you know, I think, like I say, it's just a shame that we're we're not looking at a you know a sixth and a seventh place for them. Um, it, it's it's sort of one of those things where you you go and you're wondering what might have been. Yeah, I think that's uh, that should be the uh, that should be translated into Latin and put around their badge. As, as the Alpine motto, <laughs> just wonder what could have been. But there we go. That that's Alpine. That they're 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 moving forwards a little bit at least. Anyway, it's not spectacular, but it's okay. So uh, moving on to George Russell, then Aaron, I'm going to talk about him on his own because he had a great race. He he did pretty much the entire race distance, bar a few corners. But then, yeah, he was pushing on the aggressive strategy and pushing for a more aggressive strategy. Like, just please, just let me do the opposite of science and. Uh, he did that, but then in the end, just slightly too aggressive on that last lap. Yeah, but I'd, I'd, I'd suggest you'd rather him do that, pushing for the win, than you know t- settling for third. That's a winner's mentality. Um, he's given a bit of an emotional interview to um, Sky Sports after the race. Um, part part of me thinks that's down to the fact that they're exhausted because Lewis Hamilton's is uh, slightly less emotional, but you can see there's emotion driving it so you can see the effort that the the drivers were putting in and and george his performance the whole weekend was fantastic he had the edge on hamilton and we know exactly how good lewis can be around the singapore circuit just look back at his 2018 pole lap tells you everything you need to know about the bloke and for george to be able to match lewis at that level in the same machinery i think tells you a lot about his potential moving forward I'm not going to put the the tag of future world champion on it, but there's race wins waiting for him. Once Mercedes, if Mercedes can get that car <laughs> sorted, then he's absolutely. I think that he's showing now that he is the driver to take them forward, to take the lead when Hamilton eventually calls it a day. But for now, just keep sponging off of Hamilton. How you deal with these difficult days, these bad days? You've you've got a driver who's been through it all next to you. Just be a sponge off of him. And his his performance today was. Fantastic. He wanted to drive the strategy. He wanted to go after the win. He wasn't settling for second. And like you said, he was desperate to do the opposite to Sainz. And Mercedes were always going to do that if Sainz didn't didn't box. So he had everything he needed. It just didn't quite work out today. And I I put in my race report article on F1 Chronicle that, um, you know, you run this race another 10 times. I don't think Sainz wins all of them. And I, I think, you know, you, you probably see Russell win two or three of them at least. You know, maybe Lando Norris nicks one. Maybe even Verstappen comes through and gets one with a slightly more crazy race. But, you know, he, he did a brilliant job today and he should he should hold his head high, even though he ended it in the barriers, which isn't necessarily the place you want to finish the race. But his performance, his pace, his execution of the Grand Prix was superb. Thank you, Will Buxton there. The barrier is not where you want to finish the race. 
<laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah, I was um, I just being a little bit, probably a little bit mean on to him there, saying about it, you know being too aggressive and everything. But uh, but yeah, he, he did have a stunning weekend. By far the best Mercedes all weekend. Hamilton didn't really see him at the races. Uh, we'll get onto him a little bit later. But Red Bull, then we're talking about them next, Tom. And if you'd have said to me halfway through the race that they were going to finish fifth and eighth. I'd have been like, well, what craziness is going to happen? And in the end, that craziness was just having better tyres at, at the end of the race. It was uh, obviously the right thing to do. Um, it was a really strong second half of the race for them. Yeah, so uh, Red Bull, you know, they, they obviously had a pretty dismal day yesterday by their standards yesterday, as, as we're all aware. And they started the race on hards with with the, with the view to going long. Unfortunately, that first safety car, when, when Sergeant smashed his front wing up, um, that kind of hamstrung them quite a lot because it wasn't the right time to pit for any hard runners, which there was those two, and I think Bottas might have been on hards by that point. Um, but all the other drivers who were on mediums or there were a few on softs, it was perfect timing for them. And also, you know, Sainz still came out ahead of Max at the safety car restart. Excuse me, sorry, came out of Max when he when he exited the pits under the safety car, not safety car restart. My apologies. Um, you know, it was today was always always going to be a day of damage limitation, and it was plain as day that when the safety car peeled into the pits, that those balls were struggling on those hards. I would say Max more so than Perez. I think Perez had looked after his a bit better because he was able to eke a bit more out of them. Ultimately, it was um, you know ultimately it was still. Yeah, it, it was still, you know, they were never in, really in contention for the win. I think if the safety car had come a bit later, you know, had the first round of pit stops already happened, then, you know, we might have seen a slightly different result because it would have benefited them. But I still don't know if they'd have had the pace, to be honest. Um, you, you know, t- they finished what P5 and P8. There's a bit of an asterisk over Perez because he and Albon have got to go see the stewards. Um, Perez for a move that was never on, to be fair. That move was never, ever on into turn 13. Um, And then Perez was allegedly overtaken by Albon under the VSC. So a bit of an asterisk over his position. Um, We'll we'll find out when when it happens. I've just had to look. There's nothing yet. Um, They're probably in the stewards arguing the toss at the moment. But yeah, you know, know, Max, you know, this this is the first time he's not finished in the top two this season, which... You know, given it's his worst result of the season, and he still finished P five. You know, more than is considered. That's not horrendous. I mean, it should have been P six really had Russell not done an oopsie and so whatever turn seven, wherever it was, where he clubbed the wall and you know ended his own race. But you know, you in F one, like I said before, you you dealt the you dealt the hand that the that you played. Um, oh, sorry, you know, you sorry, no, you play the hand that you're dealt. Let me try that one again. Um, yes, I saw when laughing then. Um, you know, it's uh, you know, and ultimately, you know, when when they came out on those mediums, the second um, you know, VSC safety card period definitely helped because it bunched them up a bit and it just saved a bit of life in those mediums, and they were they were able to make up some good places. But yeah, you know, they were. On merit, they were never in contention for the win today. And I think anybody who says they were, come on, be real. I'm a Red Bull fan, but you know they just didn't have the pace. They were outpaced and outclassed by by Mercedes, by Ferrari, and by McLaren. Um, and you know that's it. You know, as George Russell would say, facts. Yep. No, it's uh, they kind of they maximised what they could have done with the car that they produced on the day, and uh, that it's kind of like it's what they did very well when they weren't winning races. They optimised the race is very well but uh they are just not the not the pace this weekend and it's harping back to the mercedes dominant era where every year we come to singapore and there would just be nowhere so um yeah i mean it's it's definitely helped with the action this weekend it's nice to see a different podium up there and hear a different national anthem i, I didn't realize it's been well over a year since we heard the italian national anthem on the podium so that was that made for a nice change um, but we're going to move on to one of those Italian uh, drivers, one, one of the Italian team's drivers next, Owen, is, is Charles Leclerc. He finished fourth, which before the weekend, you'd have thought that's a decent result, but started P2, started or started uh, P3, sorry, uh, up to P2 with the soft tyres. But then after the pit stop, came out obviously a few places down, but finished 21 seconds off his teammate on the same tyre life and a massive gap to the car's 
in front of him. So he just, for me, he just seemed a bit off today. What, what's, your, what's your thoughts? Well, yeah, he got held up out of the pit stop, which really didn't help. And it, obviously it puts him uh, slightly behind. Um <clears throat> By comparison, um, you know, he lost a place there, and I think I think it was just difficult to get at people from there. Um, I don't know whether it just did, sort of didn't gel with the tyres by that point. Um, going onto the hards, maybe he just felt it. it sorry, he just it didn't gel with it as well as he could, um, as as science did. Um, that and you know he was in the dirty air, so uh, as, uh, being a bit further behind, obviously by a certain point that that you know that gap started to open up, and there. And therefore, he was back in sort of cleaner air again. But I think the damage had been done by that point. Um, you know, on the on the on the heavy fuel load, um, he just, Leclerc seems a bit. I think I I don't want to sort of armchair psychology him a bit here, but he seems a bit sort of off. Like Science looks in the ascendancy by comparison, um, whereas Leclerc just doesn't seem to have as much of that raw speed. Um, kind of there uh, i don't know i don't know what it is but it, it just doesn't look entirely comfortable even with this resurgence in form maybe the, sort of that can that can come back maybe it can be cultivated now that he's now that the ferrari you know they're not firefighting other problems but yeah he just didn't seem to have it on the day um it's yeah it's he it's, it just seems a little off um and and i and i kind of don't know why it's it's, it's a bit it's a bit baffling. Um, it's a lot, like you say, it's a decent performance, and it's honestly so much better than where they were at the start of the year. Um, but it, yeah, it's just, it's just. I, I think the thing that I can say is, it's the the fact that we're looking at it going, oh, that's a bit lower than they could have been. It is a massive step for them. Um, I think that's that's so much better, and it, and it's and it's a sign of good things to come. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's an interesting dynamic at the moment in in that Ferrari team with those with those teammates. But we're going to talk about science a little bit later on as he did slightly better than Leclerc. Uh, I'm going to come to Aaron next. Then we're going to talk about McLaren. But I, I know you've got something you want to say about Ferrari as well. But uh, but um, McLaren PS37 for Norris a really strong second second place. Obviously with the upgrades on there as well. But really just a very strong performance from both drivers today as well. And Lando could have even won as well. Yeah, McLaren certainly had a chance of winning this race. And uh, just on the Leclerc and Science dynamic that Owen was just mentioning, um, I can't remember who was saying it, but I think it was in practice. I think it might have been Karen Chandock saying uh, that Science has been driving the, the setup uh, in a slightly different direction on the Ferrari, which has made it a little bit more suited to the way he drives, potentially. And they're able to get a little bit more out of it. I can't remember quite what he said, but there is a dynamic with the setup that is slightly helping signs and that's being borne out at the moment with the uh the results uh leclerc struggling since the uh the summer break but to their old foes mclaren and you know this this is another win i think that's got away from lando norris he could really have put signs under pressure whether it would have worked out or not is a a different story but with all those upgrades, it shows just how competitive that car is going to be at certain race circuits as we go on through the season. Mexico could be an opportunity for them, although there is a big straight there, and McLaren does seem to have a problem in terms of drag. Um, parts of Suzuka next week could be very beneficial to them. And Lando drove a splendid race once again. And for Oscar Piastri to come through from, where was he, 17th on the grid or something and finish seventh navigating what is what has been a, a generally slightly chaotic race and a race that can quickly come undone as logan Sargent found another first timer ending up in the wall but mclaren are looking much stronger this is the mclaren of old that people are used to that is challenging for podiums more often than not and you know i don't think mclaren should be happy with podiums i think they should be looking for that race win especially with lando although the way lando's luck would have it oscar piastri will nab it first um in a crazy wild race it would probably be in a race where there's late rain to be honest uh, just to rub salt in the wounds for lando a little bit more but a superb drive and that mclaren with those upgrades as i said could be really special at other tra other tracks this season so Keep your eye on where McLaren filter at, and Lando Norris is in brilliant form. So, uh, you know, it might might be a bit of a bold prediction, but 
McLaren really could win a race before the season's out, especially if Red Bull dropped the ball somewhere else. Yeah, well, I did predict that Lando Norris would win this race. <laughs> it's my uh, with my free free weekend uh, prediction. It was more out of hope than expectation, though. In all fairness, so uh, but we on Tom then to um, to your favourite driver, Lewis Hamilton, uh, came uh, <laughs> very much came alive in free air and really was the second best Mercedes all weekend. But he seemed to have the pace on George in that final stint just before. Um, just just before the uh, the crash, obviously, but um, was never going to get past him. And a month for Sunday is not with both of them on the same tire. But uh, what's your thoughts on uh, on on his race and as well that that first corner, that first lap corner cut as well, which uh, he had to obviously set him back a little bit. Yeah. So just coming off the, the first lap corner cut, um, it it was a corner cut. Uh, I think Lando was clutching at straws a bit when when he said something. Let's give that back to me. Uh, no, Lando had already made the move on. Uh, uh, sorry, Hamilton had already made the move on Lando by that point. He did break very late into in, in, into turn one, and then as you know, he, he did cut the circuit to go past Russell. Even if he did go around the bollard, he still left the track and gained an advantage. Um, ultimately, he gave it back. I think he could have perhaps given it back a bit sooner, but but you know, from a safety standpoint, they don't want to then leave themselves vulnerable to cars behind, especially on the first lap, because you know, it's, you know, everybody's everybody's super close on the first lap. Um, yeah, it, uh, yeah. As as for, as for the rest of his race, he, he was sort of sitting pretty. Um, he was just just keeping tabs. The Merck is it's a better race car than, than it is qualifying car, um, and we saw that in abundance today um, until his teammate hit the wall, and um, uh, and and yeah, you know, Hamilton, he just. You just kept it going. I think had that been Mercedes pre-2022, so had that been Bottas in that second Merck, who would have been up there? I mean, I don't think it would have been anyway, um, but he would have probably been told to get out of the way. Um, Hamilton, he was he was closing in on Russell, and the pressure that Hamilton was putting on Russell, I think, ultimately forced Russell into that mistake on the last or last but one lap. Um you know, we heard Hampton on the radio saying, you know, oh, oh, Russell's going too slowly, you know, oh, oh you know, oh, Russell needs to speed up, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, but, you know, Russell is also racing his own race. So, you know, you can't, you, you, you can't, you know, sort of like turn around and say, you're on a team and get out the way, you know, because I'm, I'm quite, Russell was, you know, Gunning, gunning for the win, he was definitely in contention for the win. I was fearing at one point that he was going to, uh, that he was going to win, and I was getting ready to pull a sickie for this show because I couldn't bear the thought of being on the on it with, with three Mercedes fans. But there we are. Um, no, that, 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 I'm joking about that last bit, but yeah, he, you know, it's um, you know, uh, ha- Hamilton, you know, he really sort of squeezed the pressure on, and I think if if he if he and Russell would have, uh, it's it's a hard one because. Mercedes at the minute don't really have a def- sort of a like definitive first and second driver, um, and and it's, it's like you know it, you you wouldn't know who they'd be backing. So I did wonder if we were going to start to see sort of like flashbacks of Rosberg and Hamilton coming in, um, and some of the moves Hamilton was pulling. You know, some of the late braking. You know, he had a good good scrap with Perez after the safety car restart. I think Aaron in Slack, you, you said you thought it's going to be a Hamilton twenty ten type move at one point, um, you know, which was a you know it did, did make me chuckle a little bit, but um, but yeah, you know, he was uh, Hamilton was definitely looking after his best interests in in that race, which you know he's a racing driver, he's going to do, you know, he's got this rock, it's hundred and ninety something podium, hundred ninety six podiums now, I think he said, I can't remember, um, but you know that's that's an incredible achievement in itself, and you know he's just a He's he's still going fairly strong, so um, so yeah, it's uh, it's 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 a, it's a good day, it's a good day at the office for him. First time he's been on the podium since Silverstone, um, deserved it, and yeah, just uh, you know, well done. On to the next one. Yeah, no, it's solid, solid performance again. There, I mean, Mercedes were probably probably not quite as fast as they thought they would be. I don't think they're expecting Ferrari to be as quick as they were, but uh, but Ferrari were the quickest team seemingly. And uh, I mean, Carlos Sainz, top of the tree, his greatest race in F1, in my opinion, without a shadow of a doubt. He controlled the race from the start, a lights to flag win, but a few more laps, he could have ended up in in P four in in some scenarios. 
Yeah, it was. Just, it was the. They were the quickest car on the day, but also the slowest. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. It's like it, it was. It was mostly. It was. It was. It, it was sort of a masterclass in how to win a Grand Prix. Um, you know, it's it's a high deg circuit, and you've just got to look after your tires. You know, you, you're likely to go up to the time limit, and you, you know, you, there's nothing saying that you have to go um, as quickly as possible all the time. I mean, I know we want to see that, but. Um, unfortunately that's not how the game is played and it worked beautifully for him um you know it, it prevented anyone from having an opportunity to undercut him um you know it kept him safe from the uh, safe at the restart um after the safety car and the pit uh, and and the pits and then you know and then he had uh, and then he had um the the mercedes coming at honestly a rate of knots i think uh, i think obviously the 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 mercedes sort of once uh, you know they squabbled a little bit between themselves and but he he used uh norris uh yeah he used norris um beautifully honestly like uh, to 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 have the presence of mind um you know when it's it, it's easy to have brain fade in those conditions you know it's hot it's sweaty you've been driving the car for an hour and a half and you're thinking oh no there's now two very very quick mercedes um you know que queuing up behind me um and it's and it's only a matter of time before they get past the guy behind me and and they're on me ne uh, on me next. Uh, and he and he just had the presence of mind to just be like, okay, slowed up, made sure that he he gave the DRS to Norris, made sure that he, Norris wasn't as as an easy of a target. Um, you know, even when he had sort of tires that were going off, so he claims. Um, and he and he just and he just managed to to meter out those, those final few laps. Um, as you say, it, a few more laps. Mercedes is going to get past. Uh, you know the 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 the, the degradation of their hard of, of the hard tires. You know there was a twenty five lap difference in the tires. At some point, it was it was kind of inevitable that the Mercedes would get past um, Norris, and then you know I think it was a bit of a sitting duck. But for for the, for the amount of laps that he had, it was like seeing out the it was like seeing out the time limit on a on a, on a game of football. It was just it was just making sure you make the plays and you know kick it to the kick it up into the corner you know pass it around a little bit just do what you need to do to 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 take the win and, and you've got to be able to learn how to win that way and that's you know it's exactly what he did he didn't blast off like max and ruin his tires which is you know part of the reason that max struggled he just he just drove the race that he what that he wanted to didn't get frightened didn't get you know kept safe in the knowledge that you know it's it's going to be hard for them to pass and and i'm the one in control here and he used it beautifully to get his uh, to get his uh, win. Yeah, an incredibly intelligent performance. And I'm of the opinion that um, it's, it, it doesn't really matter how long that race was going to go on for. He was going to win it. I think he managed his tyres. He managed the situation. He backed Lando into them so that he had DRS to defend from them. And I think it was uh, incredibly measured performance. I think nobody was going to win that race but Carlos Sainz. So moving on to a very predictable, uh, for me anyway, driver of the day conversation. Uh, the grid talk driver of the day was Carlos Sainz. Could come to you, Aaron, first. Who are you going to give your driver today to? Uh, I did actually vote Carlos Sainz in our Slack chat, but I'm actually going to give it to Liam Lawson for those first points. And there's probably no tougher place for a rookie driver to go to try and score your first points. And usually a rookie driver has had, let's say, 15, 16 races before they go to Singapore. So they're very well up to speed in terms of their race fitness. And he even said to Martin Brundle on the grid, he'd have liked to have had a few more race distances under his belt. But to navigate his way through the, the jeopardy of that race, because it was at literally every corner, and just keep, keep it on the island and don't, don't go in the wall and ended up in the points. So you can't say fairer than that. And he qualified in the top 10 yesterday. So, I mean, Tom said it earlier, he, he should be, in the seat for next year. So, uh, yeah, he did a great job. Yeah, absolutely. He would have definitely got an honourable mention from me as well. Tom, your driver today? Uh, I'm going to go with Carlos Sainz, but again, honourable mentions for Liam Dawson and Piastri to get Pia because Piastri got, got way back into the points. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, And Owen, anything different? Uh, I, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Piastri. Um, he started 17th. He had a terrible day in qualifying really easy to get frustrated and you know throw it away and have a and have a terrible weekend and you know all he's done is keep his head down and um keep his head down keep it out the wall 
pick up the positions where you can and he's finished seventh which is a great result for work for considering where he started yeah absolutely it's uh there's some good some fine vintage performances out there today so uh let's look forward to next week and hope we have more of the same if you've enjoyed this podcast we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star rating on spotify and a five-star review on apple podcasts and if you're one of those listeners who are not subscribed to the channel why not give it a like and subscribe now to ensure you never miss a show again and don't for click, forget to click the bell to know when we go live it'd be great if you could share us with anyone else who fancies uh, following following grid talk so that we can continue to grow and and share with you guys uh don't forget to follow us on at grid talk on the socials and uh, just going to you aaron anything you want to plug uh my channel hgp where i'm taking mercedes back to the top uh in f1 manager uh you can follow me on x twitter whatever it wants to be called now uh at aaron harper 41 or uh, at Age Grand Prix, I think Age Grand Prix. The, the links will probably be in the description. You know what to do. <laughs> Amazing. And uh, and Tom, do you want to give a little plug to Formula Talk? Yeah, go on. Then. Um, yeah, uh, go go give Formula Talk a listen as well. Sophia, uh, you know, co panelist of um, of uh, what shows this? Good talk. I had to think then. Uh, gives um, uh, you know, oh my god, you can tell I'm not. I didn't go to bed, man. Um, yeah, no, go, go give a good, let's try the game, go give Formula Talk. So Sophia is the brains and the beauty behind, um, uh, behind Formula Talk, which leaves me, um, you know, so I sort of just like sit there and just there for the vibes. Uh, we're a little bit more, um, we're a little bit more as sporadic with shows. We cover mainly F2, F3, F1 Academy. Um, but we do also look at uh, perhaps IndyCar, maybe some Frecker bits as well. So, yeah, everywhere you can find Grid Talk, uh, you can find Formula Talk. And Owen, anything a bit more coherent you would like to plug? Uh, yeah, uh, I would uh, I, basically, I don't, uh, you know, if you want to be in the sort of notified whenever we go live and, and things like that uh, and see what we're up to, um, make sure you follow us uh, on, on the socials with the, anything with us, sorry, any social that's gotten at, uh, at Grid Talk UK. Fantastic. And uh, on those socials, all our sh- all our shows do go out live and the uh, uh, all of our race shows go out live, that is, and the previews generally are pre-recorded. And the audio version does go out slightly later, but, uh, but still very, very fast indeed. And that is on Amazon Fire, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Music, Verbal and Pocket Casts. And we do also run a Patreon if you fancy uh, throwing some cash our way to help us continue doing what we're doing. Everything does go back into the show. And uh, we will be back next week then to uh, to review the Japanese Grand Prix. And we'll also be here uh, uh, sort of midweek time to preview the Japanese Grand Prix as well. So uh, um, be free. Uh, YouTube listeners, please join us in our post show. We're going to answer your questions there and we will see you soon. Goodbye. Okay, great, right. Lots, of, that, lots, of, lots of questions. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Honestly, my, my brain is red. Yeah, yeah, I need to control or delete that. That was, uh, <laughs> uh, that uh, was uh, error 404, brain not found, that was. Right. No thoughts, head empty. Yeah. So heading heading to the chat then, lots and lots in there. Um, George Ooh. Russell, what a mistake from Ken Waller. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Huge, huge error there. I mean, how lucky though. Just, just Lando did exactly the same thing, just, just not quite as bad. I mean, how bad would that have been if you'd have seen Lando and George both crashing out on that last lap? Well, who would have been P three then? Leclerc. Not... Leclerc. Oh, it would have been yeah. Leclerc and uh, Verstappen fighting over the line. Imagine. But I mean, seriously though, Max Verstappen fighting Leclerc to cross the line for you know what could have been fourth. a fourth place. That would yeah. have. That could have been a drive of the day performance. Yeah, that, you know, and, and easily you know, forgotten. Yeah, and, and bearing in mind, you know, the 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 safety car, you know, when it came out, ruined the the Red Bull strategy. Um, you know, it, that that would have been a hell of a recovery drive for, from Max. The Red Bull strategy was ruined anyway. Like, I'll be honest with you, I'm just, I look at it and I just go, well. I if was, they, yeah, if they, like you, you, they wouldn't be in that position had they not messed up qualifying. I, I messed up their race for their, their ma- ma- messed up their qualifying setup. Fine. Yeah, yeah, well, messed up, messed up, messed up a lot of things. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't think it's an entirely fair comparison to go. Well, you messed up your qualifying, but to be fair, they they could have made it an awful lot easier for themselves. 
Yeah. Um, Russell cost Mercedes valuable points uh, in the Constructors' Championship. Yeah, I think he did. He, did. Um, he really did. Um, oh, and we could talk about the Max uh, Max not getting a penalty as well, but just cover this off as well. It was, uh, you say, like, I still think, I said in the Slack channel at the time, I thought that was a mistake, making making that change. Absolutely do it with Hamilton. Russell was too big a risk. I then came on the channel and said, okay, it was definitely worth doing uh, when we saw them right up behind them and pushing for the win because I thought it was going to be a one-two. But in the end, you know, perhaps, you know, maybe not, you know, definitively, but it seems like I was right in that, that it was a mistake. If they'd have gone with, gone with the, rolled the dice for Hamilton, him to come through, um, Hamilton could have won that race potentially, especially if, if all the cars are on much slower tyres, um, with Hamilton coming through on quicker tyres, he could well have, have won that race. But Russell was then given up a P2 for a P3, and then he's put it in the barriers, pushing too hard. So, yeah, yeah it was a huge mistake. I wouldn't say it's that big a, you know, oh, it, it's cost them so many points. It, they, they they were shooting for the victory, Mercedes, and they knew that all along. So they they had they'd made their peace with potentially losing points from the position that they were in. And I mean, they're they're not bothered about finishing second or third. They want to finish first. Toto yeah. Wolff won't be bothered if they get beaten by Ferrari this season. If they get, you know, if they get second to Red Bull, Red Bull are so far ahead. It doesn't matter what order the others finish in. It's about preparing the car for next season and making sure that they start in the best possible position to be on Red Bull's tails with whatever rocket ship they come out with next year. I mean, I hope everyone else has got theirs attached with blue shells because they're going to need it. So uh, I don't don't think it's that big a deal. I don't think internally Mercedes will be looking at it as, oh, yeah, we, we, we blew it this weekend. They shot for the moon and... Hamilton ended up amongst the stars and George Russell ended up in the black hole of barrier. So having a P having a P2 and a P5 and then finishing with a single P3, I think that's a big, you know, it's about a 20 point swing in regards to Ferrari. So I, I'm still of the opinion that in hindsight, it's a mistake. But where but, are Ferrari going to be, you know, in Suzuka? No one knows. Their knows? tire knows? is particularly yeah. good. So Suzuka is going to be high deg on the tyres. Ferrari could be nowhere next week. Let's caveat it by saying if Ferrari finished ahead of Mercedes in the championship, it was a mistake. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> well, well, no, but I'm glad. I'm glad they actually did it. Like, yeah, I'm oh glad, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm as glad, well. The I'm race would have they, petered out. Like, I'll put it this way: there's in another universe that goes differently. You know, Science does something a bit differently. Norris does something a bit differently. You know, they get they get put. I think that I think their biggest not it wasn't a mistake. It was just it is just a thing you. You know, it's a roll of the dice, and sometimes it doesn't pay off. Like it, it, they were still, they're on for a three-four. Otherwise, um, you know, we're we're talking about like a tiny sort of, you know, a thing that anyone could. Have, Lando hit the wall there. They all hit, you know, they all brush the wall. Sometimes yeah. you get away with it. He didn't this time. That's that's motor racing. That's like that. That's it's, that's part of it. It's ultimately driver error. You know, you know, Lando like smooch the wall. Russell humps the wall. And I think he broke a... his rear suspension, didn't he? I think that's why he went straight on into the barrier. Yeah, you could see well, it yeah. drop down, yeah. Yeah, and then you, you could see as soon as he hit the wall, the way he was going towards the wall, he was a passenger. That you know, he, he wasn't stopping that car for, for love nor money. Um, that no, happened to Lando on the lap before. Russell wins the race. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, yeah. It's, it's, that, that's it's, the difference. That is the difference. It, it, exactly, and his fine margins, ultimately Russell got it wrong. You know, the, uh, Norris just about got it right. Hamilton got it right. Sainz got it right. Russell got it wrong. That, that that's you know that's 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 the long and short of it. But that's what you, you employ them to do. You employ them to push the limits. He pushed a little bit further. That it's, it's I think it's fine. I don't think it, I don't think this is going to be a. I don't like, blame him for pushing that far. At all. Sorry. Well, ahead. he had to. It was the last lap. Like, I, I don't. Exactly. I, I think, I think the most. I think anyone. You, if you look at it like a mistake, I think you're on the wrong side of it because it's sort of like well. They had to push. They're racing drivers. That's that's what we're. I'm glad they did it. I'm glad they did it. Don't get me wrong, but like uh, just playing the percentages, I think it would have been a a lower risk and um, slightly lower reward if they'd have just made that change with Hamilton because George is in P2 at the time. So they've they've got a P2, and then that way, if if Lewis is able to come through and take the lead, he could potentially back 
Sainz into George and try and get the one two. So I think probably a, a lower risk strategy would have been that because they're still getting a P2 out of it and they're only losing one place track position wise by pitting Hamilton. They're losing three if they're pitting George as well. So that's why I thought it was, I thought maybe just do it with Hamilton would have been a better call. But, um, you know, like you say, other other times that's a one two. So if, absolutely it's the right yeah. thing to do. If they're in a championship fight, I think it's a different, it's a different story. Like if they're in the championship fight, they need every point they can get fine. Do, like do it that way but they're not they're, they're they're looking for what they can get and they were like right okay let's roll the dice and we can we can get a win out of this i think that's i think that's maybe the slight difference is that because they're not they, they can afford to do it that's a good point mate yeah. like and i think george drove that decision as well in his radio he was he was demanding for a you know for a positive strategy you know a, a, an aggressive strategy so i think potentially they may have been thinking like that and then george has driven it so, uh, yeah, Ken again says about it's nice to uh, to to not have the Red Bulls where uh, at the front are just having different cars there. I agree. I think it was nice just seeing yeah. different colours up there for a change. Did anybody miss Red Bull? No. No. <laughs> oh, honestly, right. You know, I've been saying this and I mean it. Even as a, even as a Red Bull fan, you know, just a, part of me wanted them to win every race this season because of what no sheep it would be. Mm-hmm. But for... for for the sport and for, you know for for the spectacle, we've had I would say probably the best race of the season today, certainly one of. And I, would, I would go as far as to say is that's the best race this generation of cars has produced. Well, it, what since twenty twenty two? I don't think I, so. I don't, I, don't, I don't quite agree with that because you've got to look at Brazil and Silverstone from last year, for example. They were very good. The, yeah, you know, so th- you know that that's that's all showing. They itself. they always throw up good racing. It's a good finish. I'll say it's a good finish to a, to a race. Probably the best finish we've had in a long time. Okay, so four people yeah, going yeah. for the win, but the race itself, up until halfway, my wife was asleep. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 yeah, but to fair on, there are other factors that play there. Yeah, I know, absolutely. She, she, she's married to you for a start. Oh, yeah, so. that, that's enough to send anyone to sleep. <laughs> but, yeah. is, I, I think it's a really strong <laughs> yeah. finish to the race. Those last 20 laps oh, yeah. were, were phenomenal, probably the best we've seen all season, but it's a 62 lap race, and let's be honest, 40 of it, probably 38 of them weren't particularly interesting. So I wouldn't say wouldn't it's the have, best sorry, race. Well, yeah, that, that if, was all. If, if we wouldn't have had the Ocon DNF, Mm-hmm. Um, I think we'd have had a fairly routine finish. Yeah. yeah, I don't think we would actually. I think I think they could have been relatively interesting because like Red Bull would have been coming through with the hard tires, and then like sort of, by that point, yeah. Well, go, and then going on to the meet, I think I think, okay, st- yeah, I think there's another scenario on the other side that we didn't get to see, which is annoying. But you know, that's life. That's racing. Yeah, Toto, it's they went motor racing. That's what happened. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, yeah. I, I think <laughs> Red Bull could... minded, Aaron. I, hate I think that it, phrase. I think it could have got interesting without the DNFs at the, uh, you know towards the end. Uh, sorry, without the DNFs at the start. I, I think obviously it, you know it, it got it sort of got the kick up the backside with the with the safety car, but that's a safety car. Like I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> There did seem to be quite the train going around, it has to be said. Yeah, just everyone was just looking after their tyres and just keeping distance, yeah. keeping the cars cool and stuff. And, and that's what was after well, the two, pit stop. You need two that seconds to pass. In. You need two well, seconds yeah. in hand to pass. And, and, and Science was doing such a good job of managing tyres up, uh, up front that that is what it is. Like, that's, that's how you win the Singapore. 1.9 seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you look at it, like you have, I know we've mentioned it before, but Charles Leclerc is in P2. Or after turn one, and at the end of the race, Max Verstappen, who was going backwards, is alongside him on the finish line. So that just, it, for me, it highlights what a bad race Leclerc had and what a good race Verstappen had. Yeah, I, I'd like to see that race run with uh, where they have to run all three compounds because I think you'd get a wide variation of people starting on different tires. Some people would go for the softs to get them out of the way. Some people would want to be on the softs at the end. You know, where would you use the hard tire? And with then the they'd, they'd, they'd think, have no think, reason to not push. I think you'd end up with the, with Pete, with them betting on um, safety cars and double pitting or something like that. I, I flip flop on that whole two uh, three tire compound thing. Sometimes I think it's a great idea. Sometimes I think it's a terrible idea. So I, I don't know with that one. I think I'd need to see it in reality before I make a decision on it. But, but it yeah, it's different in different circuits. It, it would yeah. work at circuits where you know and different you compounds say, as well. And it, where circuits where you can't overtake, it, well, it might just they might all run the same strategy. You know, you get races like that anyway. I think you need the options actually I, I, for that because I don't. If you know that they're going to have to pit another time, 
it just beca- everyone will end up on the same strategy because it's just like well we'll find out we'll work out what's what's best and we we'll, and we'll just fiddle about with when we pit you know i guess maybe a tire sorry the tire like the how you how your car uses your tires will co- probably come into it i think they just start pl- i think they'd start sort of um i think they just drive to a delta even more than they do now yeah 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 it's i, yeah. Th- I think you're right mate cuz it's just like well cuz say, so, say it's a st- stupid hot day and they know that the softs aren't going to work you'd be like we'll just we'll use the softs for five laps for five laps right at the end hmm. and that'll be it like we're not i don't know i don't know i don't i think the teams yeah. would very know, quickly it's, figure it out yeah it's just one of those things that we'd have to see in reality to see how it you know how it actually works and the unintended consequences of the rules um so uh oh this, this is a new person in our chat louis edwards uh he said uh did Who's that? max uh, i don't know i thought uh, i, I um, I thought he was on the Zoom call. Uh, <laughs> very good, very good. Uh, so Max did a good recovery drive, all things considered, and he almost beat Charles. Yep, we covered that off. Charles has had nothing to fight for. It's no wonder he dropped off. I mean, he's a Formula One driver. He should push right to the end. Um, don't think Lando was ever going to win this race. Carlos was managing the race very nicely, and Norris didn't have enough pace advantage to pass him quickly and hold the Mercs. Fair point. I think, I think that's fair. Uh, honestly, I'm since the summer break. I'm really impressed with signs. That's two pole positions on the bounce on merit, and you know he, he did well in Monza, and he did so well today in the toughest of conditions. Mm-hmm. You know he's uh, you know he, he's he's been in F1 for a long time, and I think there have been question marks about him, but now I think he's really sort of proved his worth. Yeah. He's won a race completely on merit against charging cars on newer tires. You know he backed up Lando in, into that DRS. You know super super race mindset from him. Honestly, honestly, I'm really waxing lyrical about him, and I think he deserves it. I'm so why didn't really he, why, happy to see him. why didn't he give him drive of the day in Monza then? <laughs> because he didn't deserve it. He did deserve it, but either way, it's fine. We'll, we'll argue about that offline. You can you're entitled to your wrong opinion. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Grand Dad. <laughs> Uh, Ken, Ken Wall again. Max was never never getting a podium. Mercs were on faster tyres. Uh, Luke, yeah. who had the fastest lap, Super Max was poor this weekend. So much for Max could win in a Haas or an Alpha. Hey, Marco. I think that's a bit harsh, to be honest, Ken. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's based on your previous that's comments, I think. It's come from the mouth of Helmut Marco, which yeah. sounds right <laughs> every minute of every day. So shove it down his throat at the first opportunity. Yeah. That he's a complete idiot. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, I. I, I I do recognise the name Ken Waller from the chat before. He's definitely yeah. not. He's definitely not a Max fan. And yeah, it was it was Max's worst weekend by country mile this weekend. And yeah, he was never going to be on the podium. Um, so yeah, you know, you just you know, you, you still finish P five, take it, move on. Does it matter? Like all all all, all it all is it, it's delaying the inevitable. I was going to say all it's changed is, is, is it means that he can't uh, wrap up the championship next weekend. That's it. That's all. Ah, but if he fails yeah, to finish next weekend, <laughs> there's still a chance. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Perez is not going to win, <laughs> so he won't be allowed. I'm talking to. about Perez. <laughs> I know, but I know. I just <laughs> what I mean is like Perez. There's no way Perez uh, like so Perez has to win every single race, right? Off to 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 come first, even if Verstappen crashed out or everything. You're right, there's no win, way yeah. that happens. Yeah, it's not happening. It's not happening. Absolutely not. No. Um, yeah. Well, that's kind of. Uh, there's uh, another one on there from from Ken about uh, basically just calling Tom out for hating Hamilton. And uh, do you know what? I would. I was. I know. I don't hate Hamilton. I know. I. I would happily say. You know, we've had our arguments about Hamilton on this show, and I think you are nothing but fair to Hamilton. Um, I there was probably a slight, slight bit of jealousy there at first in like 2020, but so since then, you know, you have been, you have been very, very fair to Hamilton. You've done nothing yeah. but praise him when I've done shows of him. So I, I disagree with that one. I can, I'm afraid. I think Tom has been there. He's obviously a, he is a Max Verstappen fan, and that's uh, that is very uh, yeah I'm, well known. Yeah. So of I'm course Ma- you're going to support your driver, but you're very fair to Hamilton. Yeah, I'm a Max Verstappen fan, but first and foremost, I'm an F1 fan, and. And I, and you know, the, you know, watching that finale we had for this race today was the most excited I've been all season about a race. And that's from a yeah. Max fan who's, you know, Max yeah. was in the mid midfield. So yeah, I no. wasn't. I, I had no idea. I knew he was in the point somewhere. I wasn't looking. You know, I was I was looking at the gap between Signs and then Norris and and the team merch because I was thinking I don't know who's going to win this. That's what I'm a fan of. 
so yeah, you know, so you know, can you know, jog on. <laughs> No, don't jog on. We appreciate you you, no. you watching, Ken. Thank you. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. it's you're entitled to your opinion, uh, and as is Tom, and as as is everyone else. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was in jest. Yeah, yeah, it was course. And that, um, and a lot of the stuff we say here is in jest, whilst obviously being kind and uh, and not being uh, not being particularly um, <laughs> offensive to anyone. Obviously, but uh, we try to sometimes we cross that line a little bit. But uh, we apologise for that. But uh, thank you everyone for your comments in the in the chat today. I think we'll we'll end the uh, the live chat there, and we look forward to seeing you all in Japan.